Well, I, I think the changes in the trust in the 15 months between our very punitive report and, and our review are nothing short of miraculous, actually. The board has been very, very clear about its priorities and it's the main priority set has been around quality. I think there's been a, a prioritisation in and, in, and focus on quality of care delivered to the service users and carers and the communities that we serve. We'd been through a particularly difficult time in the Trust and there was a real buzz with the changes that were made. I think the first is an acceptance of the diagnosis. This is a board that has understood that it needs to change and is doing the right things to drive that through. I think the second is in the willingness to engage and listen. So that's to uh, the service users, it's to their own staff, and the perspective I have is to their commissioners. They knew that they had to pay more attention to what people wanted and expected from these services, and they're beginning to. There's a change, a marked change in that. And we were just absolutely amazed, not, not least because actually the timescale was very short. To come back into an organisation 15 months after we delivered our first report and sit down with some of the same staff but also some, some new people who weren't new to the Trust but were newly involved and to hear their stories that were just totally the opposite of what we would found before, we found absolutely extraordinary. It was amazing. An immense culture shift and I, I've come across consultants that I've known for more than 10 years who are now in roles, leadership roles, where they are really, their whole demeanour has shifted and they have a clear sense of involvement, uh, a clear sense of responsibility and a clear sense of the challenge that we all have to deliver on in this trust. Well, there's an openness and I think there's been an installation of hope so let's be clear about what our purpose is, let's be clear about what our priorities are, let's start to behave differently. That culture is beginning to permeate out um, right through the shop floor, so people are beginning to look at, at quality of what they do in a very different way from the past. Well, the most obvious thing is that clinicians have been put into leadership roles. Uh, that in itself is a challenge. You know, we are uh, responsible and accountable for what happens in our services and that accountability really concentrates the mind um, but it's, uh, it's a challenge that I think clinicians are stepping up to. Really, really important to have the whole of the clinical workforce in its widest sense involved and engaged in leadership, in the decision making. So having those doctors now come up and say, yes, I would like to be a clinical director, I'd like to be involved in leadership, yes, I'd like to be a medical director, is just absolutely fantastic. I think I feel better communicated with. Not only that, I feel more able to voice my opinion. So if I wanted to go to our chief exec and say something, it would still be a bit scary because he's still the chief exec, but I'd be able to do that, whereas I don't think we would have been allowed to before, so that's good. And what's being talked about at board level is being translated through to those people who actually have to deliver the services. And um, what I have to say is being listened to. So. It's something that really encourages me as a member of staff, but as well as the team, because I can say, you know, this is an idea I came up with, it worked well on the unit, and now they roll it out in the trust. So for me, it's a fantastic thing, which has changed only in the last year, where before I didn't feel this, where now I'm very, you know, sort of uh, positive, and I have a lot more confidence from that. Well, I think it's a shift away from uh, sometimes a problem the NHS has had of being almost like a juggernaut with uh, top-down, bureaucratic, deterministic leadership, which is almost like instructions sent out from um, central command, to a more distributed, um, owned and um, engaged, engaged way of working with the organisation. So uh, the organisation, I think, is listening. And so the management structure have got a focus on what the local issues are, what the problems are, what the needs of the service users are, and listening to the clinicians. This organisation was thinking about and working towards many of the themes that have come out of Francis, 
before it was published. Um, and I think to some extent, because of the position it was in 14 or 18 months ago, it's got itself on the front foot. So it's doing the friends and family test ahead of any requirement. It's thinking about how it measures quality and how it identifies where it needs to intervene. It's created a quality academy to deal, to, to anticipate and deal with some of the challenges we'll have around the money and quality going forward. It's all about the three E's, empower, enable and encourage. And I think that our staff are beginning to feel like the organisation is having that philosophy with them as well. It's, it's a long journey that takes years to achieve, but the journey towards a real cultural embedding of the desire to do well for the customers and to be able to evidence that you're doing well and evidence that you're being safe. I think that's there. I think that's been achieved in the year. I think the next year has got to start to produce the added value of that being evident to commissioners, customers, and hopefully the staff themselves. The staff are finally getting the pride back. Proud of being here, proud of being part of the NHS, and that's what it should be. To make that significant change to culture, to leadership, to structure, and indeed lots of other things around technology and systems that have been brought in in that 15 months, actually amazing. Thank you.